In this specialized center for aquaculture of the National Institute for Freshwater Fisheries Research in Nigeria, numerous researches have been conducted on tilapia and catfish. This giant fish-shaped monument, eye-catchingly towering in the middle of the yard, is the very epitome of the area of interest of the institution. The premises of the institute host dozens of fish-rearing tanks. One of the areas of specialization of the center is the farming of tilapia, a species most often found in African waters. We know that tilapia is a tropical fish. Tilapia is an African fish. The weather, the climate is conducive for tilapia production. But we have a challenge on that tilapia uh, production. Uh, the tilapia is highly prolific and it produces a lot and because of that it's always stunted in growth. So it's a challenge. So we thought it fit and we discovered that the male tilapia grew faster than the female tilapia. And since it's African fish easy to produce, even the feeding it's not too much of a challenge compared to catfish. So we now decided to use three uh, research focus under this research, that is production of all male tilapia using hormonal treatment, manual sexing, and YY super male. Researchers of the National Institute for Freshwater Fisheries Research of Nigeria have been conducting several types of research on tilapia. The technology used by Nigerian scientists imply hormonal treatment of the fish. The method involves the use of hormones to produce male tilapia to meet production targets are set out by the protocols of research and to respond to the concerns of fish farmers. As soon as they start using this technology, researchers were quickly faced with a great challenge that required the adoption of matching solutions. You can see we have our male and female here. But because of the agitation of bringing them out, the female will release all the embryo and it will go down the net. The embryo is already inside here. So it's very easy, hold it for me, it's very easy for us to scoop the embryo with this net. We scoop them. We're able to get enough quantity for our hormonal treatment. We will now take them to the lab and set the experiment inside aquarium tanks. By the time we enter the lab, we see it and they will start applying this 17 alpha methotestosterone at 30 microgram per uh, feed. We use, we use uh, uh, 0 0.2 either atemia or Copen's feed because that is what they can take at that age as soon as we start feeding them for a period of 28 days, uh, one month. Uh, we now bring them outside and we discover that during the experiment that it was successful. This equipment you are seeing here is uh, an improvision we made. We, the, one of the biggest challenges we are having here is uh, how to hatch the tilapia eggs because the tilapia egg needs to be in a constant motion. It's not like the catfish egg. So we try to improvise by constructing this. How did, does this system work? Water comes out from this tank through a pipe, goes to this UV light, then comes under here. Coming under here now, the water will now be supplied through here. This is where we have the egg. We want to make sure that the water continues rolling. So the pressure from which the water is coming out from here, we always make the egg to continue rolling in constant motion so that the egg does not rest. If it rests in a, if it's a tilapia egg rests in a place, it will not hatch. The research conducted by the Nigerian Center for Aquaculture aimed to produce a hybrid type of fish capable of responding to changing local environment. According to researchers, this newfound breed is likely to outperform other original species. The ultimate goal of this research is to develop standard brood stocks capable of meeting the expectation of farmers who seek to reap profits from their farming business.
The research focus here is for us to hybridize Clearas angularis from three ecological zones, which we did, and we produced the fingernails. This is what we are seeing. And the, the focus is that as we advance in this research, at the end of the day, we are able to get a blue stock that is, uh, uh, that is local to us. So in comparative to Clearas garapinos we are using now, they are adaptable to the environment. So the essence is that the survivor, even in this research, we discovered that the, the survivor was actually higher because they are our local fish. They are already adaptable to the environment. So as the research continues, we are going to produce what we call the F2 generation of this fish. And we expect that there will be higher performance compared to the F1 generation. And in this study, we discovered that the cross of the Clearas angularis we collected from Onisha, which is a rainforest zone, and the one we collected from Meduguri, which is a Sahel uh, region, perform better in this study. But generally, they survive, all the mating combinations survive very well. And we have the hope that as we continue, we'll be able to get uh, a standard blue stock for the farmers. Nigerian researchers have achieved groundbreaking results. As part of the research conducted on the catfish, the scientists of the Nigerian Institute of Aquaculture have successfully overcome a major challenge. Actually, during the dry season, the catfish usually reproduce very little. But thanks to the researchers' endeavors, solutions have emerged to curb this bane of fish farming especially by feeding the fish with vitamin C and E-fortified feed. Usually during dry season, the females reabsorb their eggs while the males reabsorb their milk, which prevents them from uh, reproducing during the dry season period. And so we are using this feed to feed our broodstock so that we will be able to produce fingerlings throughout the year. Uh, this experiment started in uh, October. And since Octo October, we have been producing fingerlings in this hatchery. So we have been able to break the, the, the stagnant period of not producing fingerlings through this experiment for now. And so, we have been able to produce up to 220,000 fingerlings. As they succeed in producing as many juveniles, the scientists of the Nigerian Institute of Aquaculture have opened new markets for farmers and all those contemplating engaging in fish farming. Most of these farmers source their fingerlings from the center. Many young people also interested in aquaculture have also entered the sector and started up their fish farms. So far, we have produced fingerlings which we have sold to farmers. All the fingerlings we have sold, even we have produced, even these ones are bought already. The, the training that is going on in the school, unemployed youths are being trained in the school and these fingerlings will be distributed to them for them to go and use in their various farms when they finish the training. Aside from that, those uh, uh, trainees, we have sold to many farmers. We have sold to the Arok uh, villages. We have sold fish to the Arok villages. The results achieved by the researchers have opened great avenues for job and wealth creation. In Nigeria and other West African countries, tilapia is popular among consumers. As for catfish, it is one of the most sought-after species among Nigerian consumers. Today, many economic activities have sprung up around this fish species, especially thanks to the improvement of the catfish smoke-drying technology. According to the people operating in tilapia and catfish farming, business opportunities abound in the sector. I think I've been to fish farming since the uh, year 2006. And in fact, in fact, I would advise anybody 
any any other even even though you, 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 you are a government person it's good to venture into fish farming because it doesn't it doesn't stop you for any other thing you're doing it's a very good business very profitable but it, it needs uh, close monitoring the dimension of our ponds is about 10 by 11 meter and each of the pond we, we used to stock about 2,000 pieces in each pond and if we stock 2,000 pieces we are sure of getting 2,000 kg per pond I think the one that is less is about 1,008 kg uh -huh. Unless we didn't make it up to that 2,000 pieces. But we normally get, we normally get one kg per fish. So we're able to get about 2,000, 2000 kg per pond. The last pond we harvested was about uh, 2,000, are, I think they are 2,000 pieces. And we got 2,000 kg. That 2,000 kg we sold per kg 500 naira. So if you multiply the 500 times 2,000, it's giving you 1 million. So we got uh, about 1 million naira in each pond. And you can also see the size of the pond. They are not that big, but we have water that is running, that is flowing through in the pond uh, all the times. On this uh, fish farming, I've been able to achieve a lot. Because actually, when I started, I didn't have anything. I'm a fresh graduate. But I started from the temporary site. I was able to get a permanent site where, where, where we are now. Later, we can go around so that we see some of our facilities. We have been able to go around. I was able to build a house, to get married, and presently with a son in this business. We employ about six people, full staff. And we also have an IT student who normally come, I think, every year from different universities, either universities or fisheries college here. Even wildlife, a lot of them have been coming. So I would advise uh, the youth to go into, to venture into, into this business. Don't have fear over it. It's a very profitable business. When we bring youth here, we tell them, look, stop thinking of white collar job. These are the opportunities. And I'm telling you, it's, it's yielding result. Currently, our fisheries college here, we no longer teach breeding in the first year. Because immediately you do that, once they know it, they will not even want to finish their, their program, they set up their own farms. And we see the danger in that. That means they may not be willing to improve on themselves. It's not just breeding. You have to have the basic knowledge in any business to succeed. You must have the basic knowledge and then you can now improve on it based on the knowledge because every business succeeds based on the knowledge you have. So we, we are reaching out for the youths and there's so much of it. In fact, the farms you visited, many of them are very young people, those with uh, for just finishing secondary school, a few of them are graduates who are not, they are not even interested in applying for any job. They want to live their own life and I think it's a, a success too. So we are reaching out for the youths and uh, all we need to do is to continue to educate and uh, I'm looking forward maybe uh, WAP will also sponsor a program for uh, public enlightenment, particularly in terms of youth, as this, that these opportunities exist so that it will also reduce the restfulness that we are seeing not only in Nigeria but in all, all over the, uh, the sub-region. With the support of the IDB, the Islamic Development Bank, WAP the West Africa Agricultural Productivity Program has played an instrumental role in the dissemination of this technology in Nigeria. The objective of the Islamic institution that supported nine national centers of specialization of nine countries in West Africa is to promote the use of such technology generated by research to create jobs for young people. To put it mildly, aquaculture is in full swing in Nigeria and farmers are en route to the pinnacle of success, to the overall satisfaction of researchers who develop the technology. For the latter, the intervention of the West Africa Agricultural Productivity Program of the Western Central African Council for Agricultural Research and Development, Corps of Wickard, has been the powerhouse behind these breakthroughs.